Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the May, June 2020, 2022. Let <laughs> me keep on the best of the 2024 social studies paper two exam. This is part two where we are going to be doing the option sections where I will be answering. No, what is wrong with me today? Well, where I will be answering. <laughs> The questions on com communication, consumer affairs, and tourism. Remember, this is the option section where you are required to only answer one question from this section. So you're going to choose from among communication, consumer affairs, and tourism to answer one. Tourism is usually the easiest question. However, this paper, all three are relatively easy. Uh, there is no part to these questions where I think a well-prepared student would not be able to answer. There's nothing here that a not so well prepared student wouldn't be able to answer. There's nothing here that a fairly prepared student wouldn't be able to answer. The only way you might have problem with these questions if, if, is if you didn't study any one of these topics at all, you may have a problem. But somebody may can just use common sense and reason it out. Remember, you don't need an introductory paragraph, you don't need conclusions, you don't need a thesis statement. You just indent from the margin and answer each part of the question because six is only going to give you the grade for the answer to each part of the question. All right, so if you decide to do communication, this is how we're going to answer it. All right, are you ready? All right, let's go. So it says preserving and promoting the culture of the Caribbean region. Write an essay on the topic above in which you want. Describe two forms of communication used in the Caribbean, right? First thing I felt to be tricky. Um, you guys were able to hear me because I just see something come up on the screen that your default speaker has changed the headphones real tech audio. I hope you were able to hear what I was saying before. I am hoping. All right, so it says. Describe two forms of communication used in the Caribbean, right? This might be a little bit tricky if you're not careful because many persons might be tempted to use media or medium of communication instead of actual forms. So the two forms of communication used in the Caribbean is verbal communication, right? Which is any written piece of work that is... Any form of communication that uses words is called verbal communication. So not only written, but spoken words as well. We call that verbal communication. For example, songs, books, newspapers, signs, any piece of drama. Then we have nonverbal communication. This is any form of communication that doesn't use words. For example, gestures, facial expressions, screams, cries, signs signal sorry etc and some signs too, because some signs include symbols right and those are not words so that is non-verbal communication as well next part says explain two ways in which communications technology supports regional integration all right communication technology such as re radio and tv supports regional integration because regional links and discussion can be had through radio and TV programs, right? We have also cell phones. This gives regional access to businesses so people can even send and receive emails, right? People can make purchases, bank transfers on their cell phones, right? So you can buy from regional businesses. You can send information around the region, good? Then now we suggest three measures that Caribbean governments may take to reduce the impact of the global media on the Caribbean, on the culture of the Caribbean, sorry. All right. So look closely. They are asking for three measures that Caribbean governments say. It must be something that the government can do, right, to reduce the impact of the global media on the culture of the Caribbean. And when once they say global media, we know that is they are talking about worldwide, right? And then now you are going to justify why each measure is likely to be successful. So one way in which Caribbean governments may 
reduce the impact of global media on the Caribbean culture is to educate citizens on the importance of preserving their national culture. This is likely to be successful because people must know and value the importance of preserving their culture in its authentic form, right? Try not to water it down and make it become too influenced by foreign culture because we want future generation to experience the national culture in its authentic form. One, another measure could be to encourage the production of local films, drama production, music, and dance that showcases the local culture, right? Sometimes a lot of this is not done. So foreign media infiltrates the local scene and people are just, for example, in the Caribbean, people are more exposed to American and European culture instead of the Caribbean culture because not a lot of local programs are on TV. So governments can encourage the creation and production of more local programs, right, that encourages and allows our, our national culture to continue for it to become what we would say in Cape Tourism, sustainable, right? So we have it now and future generation also enjoys it in its purest form, right? Another thing that the government can do is fund these local productions because many times why we don't have local programs on TV, on the radio or on internet websites like YouTube is because it's very expensive to fund these programs. So if governments create a way where people can get funding, maybe not for free now, but capital is available to them so that they can help themselves to actually produce these programs, then a lot, of, a lot more persons would want to go into production to make these drama productions, make these movies, film these series on our local culture, and it will help the culture to be preserved in its purest form, right? So easy, easy, and we would have wrapped up that question on communication. So 20 out of 20, boom, bang, grade one. All right, next question is on consumer affairs. Consumer awareness, practicing thrift. Your school has started a campaign to encourage students to save money and is preparing a handbook to be distributed to the students in the school. Prepare an article for inclusion in the handbook. In your article, you are going to define thrift. Thrift is the ability to use money and other resources carefully and not wastefully, right? So you manage your money, know what you have, and spend wisely. That is basically what thrift is. Then the next part says explain one benefit to students of practicing thrift, right? One of the major benefits of practicing thrift is that it helps you to save. Your parents ever tell us you must put away something for a rainy day. Yes, it helps you to save and it helps to prevent you from being an impulsive spender, right? Where you just go out there and sit things and buy it because you have money, but you really don't need it. When you're thrifty, you spend wisely and buy what you need. When you have a surplus, you can splurge a little on some of your wants where you don't just go out there and be a crazy spender. No. Next says, outline two ways in which globalization has increased students' demand for goods and services, right? Globalization has increased demands for goods and services because globalization has created cheaper goods and services from all over the world. Before globalization, we may have been a little bit limited to our national country, to our nationality, so in our country, right? Sometimes things are so expensive. Right, or we'd have to wait until somebody travels internationally to like North America or to Europe to get things. But whatsoever is in North America, Europe, or even Asia, like China, we can actually purchase these things online. And many of them on sites like Alibaba, Sheen, Amazon, items are available for dirt cheap prices. So people have access to cheaper goods and services. So it has caused them to want to purchase more things. Another thing is that there are wider choices of goods and services. Before, the biggest shopping or search engine for shopping was Amazon. And Amazon was dominant for years, but more sites, uh, shopping sites have emerged. 
and given competition to Amazon like Alibaba, AliExpress, Sheen. So people have more choices. So they are going to want to spend more because more is available and for cheap as well. Another one we could be we could talk about is more widespread use of technology for transactions. So instead of taking a plane to go to wherever the item is, you can actually purchase it online or you can actually purchase a service online. And as I'm just some, something like unlocking a phone, you can purchase the, you can purchase the code from online and unlock a phone at home instead of actually taking it to a phone shop to get it unlocked. All right, good. Next part says suggest three strategies that students may employ in their efforts to practice thrift. Then you are going to explain why each strategy is likely to be successful. All right. So in order for students to employ being thrifty, they need to shop wisely for goods and services. This is going to be effective because if they shop wisely, then it means that they are going to get the best value for their money. And you notice I said best value, I didn't say cheaper because cheaper doesn't necessarily mean that it is the best quality. We're going to shop around to save on the price and to also get the best quality because the better the quality, the more long lasting the item is going to be for you. Another thing that they could do is using and caring for their possessions well because you are being thrifty, you get the best quality product for the best price or the most competitive price. You also want to take care of it because you don't want it to be destroyed or become defective too soon where you have to go out there and spend money to buy something else. This is going to be successful because if you care for your item, then you are going to have a longer shelf life, right? And it is going to save you because you don't have to go out there and buy something new after a month or after a year. Understand what I'm saying? Very good. Another, sorry, another strategy would be conserving and recycling, right? This is a part of being 50. So instead of throwing out leftover food, once it is good, you can put it in the, in the fridge. You can warm it up in your microwave or on your stove and eat it again. Or you can use the leftover food to make a new meal. For example, you cook brown stew chicken and rice, right? And you have some leftover rice. You can put the rice in your fridge or put it in the freezer part, you know, and then you are ready again. You can thaw that rice and you can make some fresh brown stew chicken, some fresh curry chicken, or you can make fried rice. Or if you want to make a tin mackerel, you can have your rice so you can warm it up and use it again. Understand? Recycling, conserving. We conserve on our energy use. For example, we conserve how much electricity we use, how much water we use, because when you conserve, it means that your consumption will be reduced and so are your bills. So instead of paying JPS or whatever power company you have in the country that you live in, so you're paying them, say, $10,000 per month, when you conserve, that bill can cut down to about a seven or a $5,000 for the month. That is going to be successful because if you're conserving and recycling and it's allowing you to save you are an even more thrifty consumer and it's going to be better for you. That is more money in your savings, more money in your pocket, more money can do some of the things that you like. All right. So again, another 20 out of 24, the consumer affairs question. We're going to wrap up the tourism question quickly and then we would have been done with the paper. All right. Next question says the tourist industry in the Caribbean benefits and challenges. The Ministry of Tourism in your country is sponsoring a speech competition on the topic above. You have been selected as a finalist in the competition. What some students will do, they will begin their essay as if they are writing a speech. Write a speech in which you, that is okay. Go ahead and do that. So it says, describe two ways in which Caribbean countries benefit from the tourism industry. Two ways in which Caribbean countries benefit from the tourism industry is that the tourism industry provides a lot of jobs where Caribbean people can become employed, right? The tourism industry always pro also provides revenue for the government through direct and indirect taxation. Good? Define the term economic leakage. Economic leakage 
This is when revenue generated through tourism is lost to other countries or economies. For example, a Spaniard came to Jamaica and built a hotel down by the North Coast. When the money is made from the hotel, whatever profit he makes is sent back to Spain to put in his account or to spend in Spain. So all of that money that is made, and not all of that money, but all of that profit that is made is sent back to Spain and spent into the Spanish economy, not in Jamaica. So that is the money leaking out, going elsewhere instead of being re-spent in Jamaica. So that is what economic leakage is, and a brilliant example was given. All right, next point says, explain one conflict or problem that may develop in the region between the tourist industry and the agriculture. And agriculture. One of the major problems between tourism and agriculture is that agriculturalists or farm, farmers would often complain that prime farmland is being taken away from them and given to investors in the tourism sector. So investors will take prime farmland to build resorts or adventure parks for the tourism sector. Next part now says, suggest three actions that the tourist industry could take to reduce the threats to the marine and coastal environments. Then you are going to justify this, right? One of the things that the tourism industry could do to reduce the threats to marine and coastal environments is to have regular beach cleanups. That is going to be effective because the waste that actually pollute the waters and can cause all kind of significant harm and damage to marine and coastal environments will be reduced. So when the garbage is there, little to no damage can actually take place. Understand another thing that they could do is reduce garbage, reducing garbage from going into the waterways, right? For example, what I see they're doing in some countries and Jamaica has also started to do so. Big drains that they set to run off into the sea, they actually put a net at the end of the drain. So all the garbage, right, that is washed down through that drain is connected in the net and at intervals the government sends a team there to collect that net and dispose of that garbage so that prevents the garbage from going into the sea and it is collected by the net good another thing that they could do is lobbying government sorry lobbying government like groups could lobby the government groups from tourism industry could lobby the government to construct sewage treatment plants so that hotels may dispose of their sewage in an environmentally safe way instead of sending these into our water bodies. We don't want raw sewage to be going into our marine and coastal environments because we know the damage that that can cause. If this is done where sewage is disposed of and treated properly, then less like it's going to be less likely impactful in a negative way on our marine and coastal environment. And when people do these things, you know, it means that they are practicing sustainable tourism, right? And marine life can continue to thrive and our tourism industry will be sustainable so that future generations can enjoy and also benefit from it. All right, we've come to the end of part two of the May and June 2022. 2022, again, I, I, I can't seem to say 2022. <laughs> 2022 without making an error but thank you guys for watching remember to like share comment and subscribe all right gentle people